I'm putting together this full workout really just because I want to show you really how many reps it takes just to get some. This was uh, Dudu's first time working with me. And we're going over basically post moves off of that rip or even off of like a catch. If you do like a pick and roll and he does a pick and pop, and he just does that sweep through and then catches. What I'm trying to tell him here is you only need two steps. So you're gonna push off of your back foot off of that rip. And once that right foot hits the ground, just land neutral. You wanna land neutral off that jump stop. Because from there, you can go either direction. You can go, basically what I'm saying is you haven't selected a pivot foot yet. So once you land neutrally, you can give a little shimmy and be able to go either direction. Shimmy, boom. So you can go off of his left foot or you can turn over the other way and go off of his right foot. Um, but showing you this, I mean, Dudu can really play the game. Like he's really good, really high IQ. Um, he can move. But when a trainer or whatever shows you something new for the first time, really what you want to do is get people uncomfortable. I want to get you out of your normal patterns. It's like everybody has a normal way of dribbling, a normal way of shooting, a normal way of moving. And uh, they have moves that they just basically rely on. I'm going to get you out of that. I want to take away what you're comfortable with. So doing this, basically I, I'm adding counters to your game. So, no matter what the defense does, no matter what the defense throws at me, help side, double team, it doesn't matter. I have a counter for it because my footwork and my foundation is ready to be able to handle anything that you throw. So uh, this is just the first step. You're going down, pushing. Again, push off that back foot, land neutral, boom. And then have that quick bounce. Uh, this is just the first part of the series. After this, you can go uh, to a direct spin. You go into hook shots, you go into fadeaways. And then we'll basically end uh, with a pump fake, rip through, get to the other side, like an up and under. Uh, but this is just the beginning. Uh, I, again, I just want to show the whole workout because I want to show how many reps it actually takes in order to get something perfected. Or to the point where you can add your own little swag to it. Uh, like I said, Dudu can play. But adding these little things to his game makes it look like he'll never know how to play basketball a day in his life. So... Uh, yeah, just bear with him. I, again, at the other time, or at the same time, uh, I want to be able to show you the progression that he makes. Uh, we're really going to keep working at it, and then once we see that progression, see how quick he is on, on, the, on, the, on the hops, how quick he is with his footwork, how bouncy he becomes. But this was, the, this was the first day. So we can really watch how heavy he is now and then turn it in to see how light and agile he becomes and again he's already light and agile in his moves that he's comfortable with but i'm gonna make him agile in everything he does so yeah just bear with him watch and learn and uh just enjoy this and i'm gonna keep breaking it down as as we uh look at it see as i did on that one i went with that quick swing that's gonna be a counter so say i feel that defense on my shoulder boom and i can feel him with my legs and i feel how he cut me off I can stop, I plant, and since I planted neutrally, I know where he feels and I can turn whichever way I want. If I plant and I already put my left foot down or something, he can crowd me and I won't be able to move. But if I plant at that neutral position where I have both feet hit at the same time is what I'm basically telling him, then I can, I can spin off him, I can feel him, and I can basically throw a counter, fade away, rip through, whatever. Whatever I want to do there. Okay, so... Well, first I had to, I had to cut some stuff out. Can't give you all my secrets, uh, <laughs> but uh, here I'm just talking about making sure you take up space after you do that, the, the hop step. So basically, right when that right foot hits, you still have time to, to take up more space. Uh, it's just the little tricks, just like doing that little hop step. If you saw it at the very beginning, do that little hop step. You can take up space like a euro. You can like hop into your tooth. The funny thing here is. I basically cut him off, like, like I was saying earlier. I, I cut him off, and then he accidentally spun because he felt where I was. He just wasn't on balance. <laughs> but that's basically what it's going to lead to, like I was saying earlier. Once you feel where he is, if you land neutrally, he didn't land neutrally. He already had his right foot planted. That's why he fell over. But if you land neutrally, you feel where he is, and then you can either hit that quick spin, like I said, or you can, or you can just... 
basically feel where he is, go into a jump stop, up and under and stuff like that. But like I said, right when that right foot hits, take up a little bit more space into your hop. Before you hop, take up a little more space, then land. See, he, he's, not, he's not landing square yet. He's still landing. He's still planting that foot. Boom, land square. Now I can pivot wherever I want. I'll go whichever I want. Boom, land square. Shimmy turn. See, I, like I said earlier, the hardest thing is he's thinking about so many things. He's thinking about the footwork. He's thinking about the rip through. He's thinking about so much stuff. And I'm just going to keep breaking it down. I'm going to keep giving him things to think about to make it harder and harder and harder. So he's not even focused on the shot right now. He's so focused on the footwork. He can't, he can't focus on shooting. Footwork, bounce. That wasn't bad as far as the bounciness of it. But again, he didn't take up space. He didn't rip through. Trying to get that foot, he's trying to get comfortable at it. Uh, the thing that the thing that I don't like is when he's coming, it's about where that base is. You see that little shimmy? I can do that because it's just like a rip through or a jab step. If I have the ball by my chin or my or in my chest, one, the defense can't grab it. And two, it makes it more shimmy. It makes it really look like I'm turning into a hook if the ball is by my chest. The ball is underneath the low. One, if I'm a vet player or something, I can just kind of pin your arm against your body. You won't be able to turn to get it up. The ref ain't going to be able to see that. Uh, but if you keep it by your chest, it adds more shimmy. He still brought it low. He's got to keep it up. If you keep it up, one, I can't get in there. Uh, the, the guard's reaching down the help side. He can't strip it away. The big can't see it. And if it's up, the defense on the backside, the other big, He's not gonna be able to get around that bow. You know what I mean? That that big elbow and shoulder you got turning into his uh, into his chest. So uh, just little details like that really make all the difference. Uh, and then we got into talking about the rip through. Uh, he's got to extend. He's got to use his whole arm. If he uses his whole arm, he becomes all of six ten. Like I said, I mean, I could take up the same amount of space that he does. I'm six three. Uh, you got to use your whole arm when you rip through. Really extend, like I said right there. I call it that T-Rex arm. You want to throw that ball out so you can go get it and take up space. If you hold him off with your right arm, your little arm bar, guard bar, whatever you want to call it, if you, if you hold him off, he's not going to be able to get to it. If he took up so much space, he was under the basket. Just by throwing it out, something so small as extending your arm and keeping your arm in makes all the difference in the world. You'll actually take up more space using less energy if you have the correct technique. It's, it's like golf swing. Like the harder you swing, probably the, the worse you have control. You, you know what I mean? If you swing easy, you just accept the further distance. It's all about the technique. If I can get Dudu to understand the technique of how to push, when to extend, how to use your length, he can become taller than what his 6'10 is. I, I play really taller than, than what my height is. I'm not that tall, I'm not that big, but I can get places just based off of extending my dribbles, going very far within the amount of one dribble. Basically that comes from using the length of my arms and uh, having my footwork ready. If you watch like Kyrie or something, Kyrie always has a foot loaded where he can basically make a counter, make a move, push off of something. There's always a foot that's loaded. There's never like a flat foot moment. He's always rearranging his feet so he can push off and go basically in any other direction. Basically, if you, if you make a move, he's got to counter for it because his foot's always ready. So we're just getting into to those little things. Like I said, there's so many little details that break down just this one simple move that you have to realize how long it really takes to perfect something, something that's new. You got to be in the gym. Definitely got to be in the gym. Yeah, and here we just basically kept it moving as far as just getting up more reps, more reps, trying to add a little bit more flavor to it, more swag. He's starting to get the footwork a little bit, but, you know, we, we just want to add a little bit more speed to it. You know, anytime you learn something for the first time, it's, it's tough, you know. Uh, but anything you do, you want to, you know, add your own swag to it. You know, not, not everything is going to work for every single person, but... Uh, the foundation will work. Like, I can teach you some footwork, and it's definitely going to work, but uh, you got to add your own style to it in order for it to really benefit you. 
Uh, so that's what that's what Dudu's trying to do here. And again, with, with Dudu, I mean, I, I could easily make a video where, where he's making seven, eight, nine in a row. Uh, you know, really, you know, dunking it, really, really, you know, making everything he shoots. You know, he's real quick. Uh, this is the video of him trying to get better. Right? So it breaks it down. So like when I played, I mean, uh, it's what, what good is it to always have a mixtape? What good is it to always just look phenomenal? You wanna. You want to be able to break your game down, be able to see yourself uh, doing bad things or whatever, or things that's not basically the perfect way, and then make adjustments, fix it. Uh, that's why I love this. I love this video. This is my first time doing a little voiceover, breaking down a workout. Uh, this is good for me, too. You know, I get to see myself, how I'm explaining things, how I'm uh, basically uh, showing it, and make sure I'm doing what I'm doing uh, correctly as well. But... Uh, this is good for both of us. You know, we learn together. This is what fellowship's about, man. Just growing together, having fun together. We're going to be smoking layers. Uh, what I'm talking about here is uh, you want to have that base. And after you do that rip through, you can get that solid base on the one side. You do the rip through either over or under, you know, because you're going to move your head if, if somebody puts a ball through your face with, with some elbows. Uh, or you go underneath like James Harden does. Uh, you basically going to, instead of grabbing the ball, you're going to grab an arm. Uh, but after you get through all that, you don't want to just go directly up to the basket. You want to keep using that body as a shield and uh, work on your angle of, of release. So instead of going forward and your shoulder and the ball going forward, put the ball out to the side. It's way harder to get to. And if you can develop a touch uh, on the outside of your body, like a hook shot or something like that, while taking that contact, I mean, you're going to be at the line getting M1s all day. Uh, I mean, it's very very effective so right there you know he didn't have a solid base on the rip through uh so that basically ended up getting that foot caught up and then he lost his balance going out of bounds that's what i see constantly with younger players they're not strong enough in their base so when they get bumped they're constantly falling out of bounds and you know i ref games and stuff and coaches and parents are always yelling oh my kid's getting hit no your kid is weak like he's not strong enough you have to develop your base. So, like, if that little bump right there happens, you're going away from the basket. You're never going to get that call. You're just never going to get that call. Establish your base on the right side. Rip through. Establish your base on the other side. And then go up strong. Use your body to shield. And use that left hand or right hand, whatever, going out instead of directly towards the basket. You know, it's just other ways to work. I'm not saying don't ever go directly towards the basket. I'm saying work on different release angles. That way, again, no matter the situation, I got to counter for it. The reason why I'm telling Dudu to go out, you know, accept that body and use that arm, is something that I have never really seen him do. When I see Dudu play, he's constantly just finishing at the rim, finishing at the rim because, you know, he's, he's getting there easier or better. Uh, he's not always going to be able to do everything as easy as he normally does. So uh, we got to be able to just develop those different skills. Uh, but, yeah, like I said, again, man, breaking down the film, breaking down what you do wrong and stuff, man, that's the best way to learn. Uh, there, there's, there's no way that I would be able to play pro or play, play in college and stuff. It, it's just if I'm sitting there always watching myself do the good things. But I constantly study the game as far as watching the bad things, and, and that's why I was able to adjust those things and, and then fix it. So... Again, we'll, we'll keep making this progress of Dudu, man. The thing I love about him, he has a phenomenal attitude. His work ethic is great, and uh, he's going to stick with it. And I love the progression that we're going to be able to see. Uh, look, make miss free throws. Miss some free throws. Shoot again. Come on. He has, uh, again, a great work ethic. I mean, this is after we played for, I'd say, two hours, and then we did the workout that you know I did make a, a little edit for it. Uh, so we did all this after we did about three hours of work. So, man, again, just keep putting that work in. This is good. You'll be able to, you know, concentrate. Again, this dude can shoot. I promise he can shoot. But <laughs> he's exhausted. This is the best time to shoot, though. It's definitely the best time to get your work in. Uh, one thing I always tell him, focus on your core, focus on your feet. And the mentality of the game is really going to help you when you're tired. So appreciate you listening, man. We'll be back. Who, who, who you are, man? Doo doo in the building, though. Hey, first workout. <laughs> I'm dead. I'm still playing. Hey, Mike is the real deal. Y'all gotta <laughs> hit him up, for real. <laughs>